Hello, Morim here. In today's video, I want to talk about the best mid to end game motivity weapons in Lies of P. I covered the early to mid game weapon combos in a previous video already, so make sure to check this one out if you are interested. This video specifically will focus on the strongest combos available in the game for you to enjoy with the greatest movesets to make fights as easy as possible. The difficulty in the later half of the game increases drastically, so having an actually good weapon in your hands is crucial to your survival and possibly enjoyment. So the first weapon I want to introduce you with is the longest reach weapon in the entire game. This weapon has an incredible reach. It basically doesn't fit on the screen. What we are specifically looking at is the bone cutting saw blade plus the exploding pickaxe handle. It features great motivity scaling, a ton of physical damage, an incredible moveset as my go-to weapon through basically the second half of the game. The bread and butter combo of this one is the charge attack followed up by another charge attack. You will step forward with the first one, but most enemies in the game will be thrown back by the first attack so you can follow up with the second one. This will stagger most if not all enemies in the entire game. You can further combine this one with the grindstones to make it easier to stagger specific enemies. The regular attack also has incredible range and also deals quite a lot of stagger damage. The dash attack features a sweeping attack and your fable arts are increased stamina management as well as a strong down cut and followed up by a charge down cut. This one deals a ton of stagger damage, however the charge up is quite long and I just found it better to follow up with a regular charge attack by a regular charge attack, which can then be used to follow up with another charge attack and so on and so forth. So actually performing the fatal attack is mostly not worth it. I found it easier to just chain your charge attacks and prepare for the next strike so you recover your stamina because this one consumes quite a lot of stamina. It is an incredible weapon combo and is basically the go-to weapon combo for the strength motivity builds. You will be able to clear the entire game after this point up to the midweight point with this weapon. You will be able to find the exploding pickaxe by exploring the opera right before the puppet king. Just look at the left side of the dungeon right when you enter. It's found in a chest. The next weapon I want to showcase is the Coil Mjolnir Head and Handle. This weapon has a great damage reduction rate and two absolutely insane fable art. Sadly we are looking at a very slow weapon attack. It's mostly not viable versus bosses and you will be punished heavily with this one. Your charge attack is also extremely slow and your dash attack is also very bad. So we want to upgrade this specific weapon with something else. This weapon specifically can be obtained in the ninth chapter. There is going to be a huge plaza with a chest, there you can find this specific weapon. Now to improve this weapon, we are actually just going to use the exploding pickaxe handle we've previously obtained. The moveset is going to be the same, however the range is going to suffer a little bit. The biggest gain of this one is the special art. The fabled art will deal a little bit of electric damage and charge our hammer. This will increase our stagger damage substantially. Our moveset is also going to be much much faster and deal much more damage. We can chain our movesets with this specific strike to increase the damage even further. The second one, while our Melania is charged, is going to deal additional electric damage. The pickaxe will also reduce the stamina consumption, so we can chain more of our charge attacks much easier. You can do this over and over again. It also looks incredibly cool. So what is the biggest trade-off between those? What do you gain by using a blunt head instead of the great sword blade? You are going to deal increased stagger damage. So you're going to trade in range for stagger damage. So what can we do to make this weapon specifically feel more like Mjolnir? We can change the exploding pickaxe handle for the fire axe handle. This will reduce the damage a little bit, but we gain a ton more utility and a faster moveset with this one. We can still use our weapon attack, so the fabled art, and now we have a charged Mjolnir. Looks incredible, deals a ton of damage, it's very versatile, you can use your hyper armor of this one, and still clobber enemies for huge damage. Later on enemies are going to be very aggressive, so when you dash away, you need to dash forward and then attack them, you're mostly not going to be in range with most weapons. But this one has this neat little charge in front of the enemy before you're going to strike them. So you're going to use the openings much much better than with other weapons. So this weapon combination especially with the increased vulnerability, the increased blitz damage, and the charged weapon attack is going to come in very handy. Once your weapon is imbued with the electric charge, you can make enemies electrified, however the chance is very low. So you're only going to deal a little bit more electrified damage, you're still going to need to use the grindstone to really benefit from the bonus. So that's only a small 
benefit of the special fable art. The next weapon can be obtained before the second brotherhood fight and is the cursed knight's halberd. This weapon is going to be a CC motivity and technique scaling weapon so you need to use a crank to get this one to be scaling. It has less damage reduction rate while guarding than your regular heavy weapon but the moveset of this weapon is a thrusting moveset so you're going to deal stabbing damage. There is quite a lot of moves that are really good. You have a fast moveset with charge attacks, you have your regular attacks with fatal attacks. It's just a very fun weapon to use. It's really, really mobile and you're going to love it once you get used to it. But there is a drawback of this one, the damage. The damage is not very high. How can you improve this one? Now to actually improve this weapon, we are going to use the pistol rock drill handle. Now this handle has a special moveset. It's like nothing else in the entire game. Your regular attack are stab attacks. It is rather slow. Your dash attack is a double stab attack that's going to stagger most enemies in the game. You can charge it and immediately release it for a burst of damage. So this attack can immediately stagger enemies with a very fast double strike with the heavy attack. But you can also hold this weapon to deal repeated strikes. The fabled art of this weapon is very similar. You can release it to deal additional damage. You can follow it up with another barrage of attacks deals quite a lot of damage is very fast however it has a really bad recovery animation with the weapon handle you can also combine this one with sweeping strikes so you have something for aoe so we basically doubled the damage of the previous weapon and it's only upgraded to plus six so keep that in mind and the last weapon is going to be the frozen feast you can trade for this weapon with a boss ergo at Alidaro. It features a completely unique moveset with a heavy, heavy strike, very slow. However, each strike will chip at the blade, revealing its true form. Striking an enemy four times reveals the whole blade and makes it strike much faster. The damage of this one is incredible. The stagger damage is also incredible. The charge attacks are very strong and can be comboed, but after a while, the blade returns to its true form. It just regrows. For the blade fable dart we can just release the blade and get an attack speed buff with this one. It's really really strong, very fast and well one of my most favorite weapons in the entire game. The blade fable dart is one of my favorite weapon attacks in the entire game. It gives you hyper armor, very very important. So you can actually spam this one in front of bosses and deal a ton of stagger damage as well as regular damage to the enemy. It's an incredibly strong weapon and very fun to play. Anyway, this sums up the list of endgame weapons that I found to be really good and obtainable early enough so you can actually use them. You can find a list of weapon parts and weapon locations down below in the comment section. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like, comment if you have any questions or remarks, subscribe if you haven't already, you can also join the channel membership or leave a donation if you have the spare coin. So, see you next time and bye.